All right. Uh, thanks for attending the session. So this is going to be about next generation JavaScript testing. Quick note for those with your laptops or mobile devices, you can go to vf.io slash jq14 and uh, get the slides that way. And it's, uh, some, there'll be a few code slides. And in some cases, it's easier to read them if you have it in front of you. A bit about me, I'm Vlad, I'm from Toronto. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub, I'm on Vladikov. And I commit to several open source projects such as Grunt and uh, Firefox accounts. And today I have, I'll have a few testing demos of the way Firefox accounts and Mozilla does its testing. Uh, let me turn off my phone first though. There we go. So first, let's go back to 2009. And John Resnick posted this article <laughs> about JavaScript testing, and he said, JavaScript testing does not scale. <laughs> so what he meant by that, um, in 2009, he had this issue where he had to test, I think, jQuery 1.3 uh, in, in different browsers on several platforms. And that was, uh, there was a lot of issues there. Uh, besides even the, the desktop browsers, he had to test the mobile browsers. And that was, that was five years ago. Now, to this day, 2014, what changed? We've got new tools, Node.js with all the new test runners and build tools, Gulp, Grunt, and so on. Uh, we have new continuous integration services, Travis CI for open source projects and um, other, other solutions. There's Sauce Labs, and it allows us to test, uh, unit tests and do functional testing in the cloud with, uh, with uh, WebDriver. And those are sort of the good things, new tools, awesome. <laughs> uh, we got new HTML5 APIs. And those made, you know, those are cool APIs, geolocation, get user media, and stuff like that. They made our lives harder in terms of if we got to test those apps now, and how do we, we have to uh, develop new solutions for that. We have web components. Uh, then we have the Android, uh, Android browser, which, you know, all the uh, Android devices are all awesome, but the Android browser has like over 20 flavors, <laughs> so we have to make sure, you know, that our apps work in the Android browser. Now, so the, all these testing challenges, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, I'm an early contributor to Firefox accounts, and those testing challenges uh, were sort of on our minds when we were building the front-end components of Firefox accounts. Uh, so when the two major front-end components of Firefox accounts, there was the FXA.js client, which is, a, which is a JavaScript library just like jQuery. Uh, it's a lot smaller and uh, less used. So I can't really compare there, but it's also, it needed sort of uh, similar coverage in testing. It needed unit tests uh, that, uh, that would ensure that the library would work on, on, uh, in different browsers. So you can see there's, right now, there's a badge right now with the, uh, the Sauce Labs badge that shows that we test, that the test successfully, successfully passed in Firefox, uh, IE, Chrome, and so on. The other component of the whole system was the content server which uh, is, its job is to sign, uh, let users sign in, sign up, change their passwords, uh, verify their accounts, and so on. So we started thinking, what, how can we test this whole system, uh, especially the, the front end stuff? And at that time, I started talking to a friend of mine uh, on RC, Colin Snover, and they were working on this project called The Intern, and you can find it at theintern.io. So him and the team at SitePan, they were trying to solve these problems for the next version of Dojo, uh, Dojo 2. And you know, I started talking to him, and I'm like, OK, we have this new system coming up. How can we, um, what, what's on your mind for this testing framework? So he made this cool chart. <laughs> and this is sort of a shorter version of it, and showed it to me, and I started looking through it. And this sort of compares intern to several other frameworks. And right away, I saw that it included functional testing. And that was perfect for the content server component that we could, we could test that system now with functional testing. Um, now, most of the front end code that we have was with, uh, built with AMD modules, and intern works with AMD modules. That was excellent. Uh, the other thing was uh, we use promises everywhere in our code as well. So uh, intern had promises built in uh, for async support. So we were <laughs> kind of sold there. The, a few other things, it had like Grunt support built in, uh, Travis CI uh, support built in, and uh, Sauce Lab support. Now before, uh, with the older project, uh, Mozilla Persona, 
Mozilla had to write its own solution to test Persona in, in multiple browsers on Sauce Labs. With Intern, we could just select the tunnel that we wanted, the Sauce Labs tunnel, and test, uh, test the application that way. So today, uh, it's been like uh, almost two years, and I've been contributing to the Intern project itself by uh, ch testing new features, uh, maintaining an example repo for um, uh, th that shows how Intern integrates with frameworks such as Ember, Angular, and so on. And here, I'm here today to show off some of the, some of the features and demo of how Firefox Accounts does its testing with Intern. Quick note, uh, how to get started with Intern. It's pretty easy. You, uh, most of Intern is like an, an OGS module. It's on NPM. So you can just NPM install Intern, and there you have it. This is like the simplest config for it. You just have an array for your unit tests and functional tests, and off you go. <laughs> you can, uh, you, when you install Intern, you would get uh, several ways that you can run your tests. The, 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 the first main way is a standalone browser client, which is you basically navigate to a client.html page, which ships with Intern, and set a path to your configuration file and will run for your unit tests. The other two ways that that we use with Firefox accounts uh, are the intern client executable and the intern run executable. The intern client lets us uh, run the test in the Node.js context, and the intern runner runs them in the web driver context. So a bit about unit testing with intern. I made this slide, which is the, uh, sort of a combination of all the possible things uh, that I love about uh, <laughs> writing tests with intern. Some of them here, uh, this is like a demo only test here. And you can see, so it's, we define our dependencies at first and say, okay, we have intern object, which uh, is the testing interface we're gonna use for unit testing on line three. And we can choose from TDD, BDD, and object testing. Then we can choose the assertion library. I'm gonna just use Chai that ships with intern. And uh, then I'm gonna load up this cool plugin, Chai has promised, uh, which I'll tell you about later. So that's our sort of testing setup. And then uh, here are the examples of how can we actually test our JavaScript code. So at line, on line seven, I have app do some promise. That's my AMD module for <laughs> doing promises, just a promise test. Then I have on line eight, I, I can, I'm able to load no, no JS modules and test them. So I can say dojo node, uh, load the path module, which is the core node JS API to work with paths. And later on, I can even load a non-AMD or non-modular code and say, okay, load up a non-AMD version of jQuery and then load up a plugin, a jQuery plugin that I want to test. And that loads them in order, and then you can see, for instance, for the jQuery part, I can, on line 19, I can just call jQuery my plugin and uh, that will initialize the plugin, and then I can uh, run my assertions. Uh, in terms of, yeah, in terms of assertions on line 17, I can just do chai assert, okay, true. That will validate the assertion. And then I can call the, the path module, path join AB, and that the same, that's the same as you would do in a node module. The Chai has promised API, the, the plugin that Chai has promised provides you is you can test your promise co code in this cool way where you say you write your test, so I have Chai has promised, uh, do some promise, and then should eventually equal to foo. So <laughs> a lot of developers like this sort of structure, and then if your, if your whole app is promises, this is, this is really excellent. You can just write should eventually equal, and this, these async tests will, um, it will t in turn, will test um, uh, your app. So here's a quick demo of how uh, we test the, the, the small JavaScript library. So we have, uh, here we go. So we can use npm test, which will use the intern client to, to test our uh, JavaScript library in the browser context in terms of, uh, it will load up the browser modules that uh, when the browser is built, it gets included in the final bundle. And it will also run, uh, it will also test the, uh, the library in the Node.js context for those who want to use the, this library uh, with, and with Node and so on. And you can see it will fly by really fast. This is the entering client. We got 57 tests, they ran twice and uh, it's fairly quick. So now we can test our, test our JavaScript library on Sauce Labs against uh, several browsers. And in this case, I'm using uh, 
the grunt support and intern, I say grunt intern sauce, and that will open up a sauce labs tunnel and will run my tests in several environments. So first, this is running sort of like real, real time. It's, crea uh, it's creating tunnel with sauce labs, downloads any dependencies if, if it needs to. And let's see, so tunnel ready, and now it's going to uh, look at the intern configuration and start testing the browser that I told it to. So Firefox 25 on Linux and Windows are the first ones to start up, and then there's IE8 on Windows as well. With, uh, with the open source source lab plan that we have, we can test up to three browsers at a time. And you see when Firefox is done on both platforms there, on, uh, on Linux and Windows, it will tell us uh, there's less environments to test, and it will initialize two more browsers, while IE8 would be still going and uh, <laughs> testing. So I hear it is a lot slower to initialize and run the test. So now we fire up IE10 and IE9. And on top there, actually, I included the configuration that we have. So this is, um, I showed you like the simplest intern configuration earlier. Uh, what we need to add to that, we need to enable the sauce labs tunnel and include the browsers that we want to test. So we can say Firefox, IE, Chrome, Safari, and specific versions. And so it's still going. IE 10 is done, and IE 8 is still one of the first browsers to initialize, and <laughs> almost one of the last ones to finish up in this demo. Um, Safari, and We got Chrome done, and we have I think, two more left. And finally, IE8 is done, awesome, and I think Safari is left. There we go. We, got, we tested several platforms, almost 400 tests. That's all for the, we tested this JavaScript library on these several platforms. Now with Sauce Labs, there's a neat feature. We can actually preview, uh, we, have, we can have a video, it records a video for every test that runs, so we can preview our unit tests. Uh, so this is a copy of the video that's on Sauce Labs. And one note here, uh, so it's gonna be a Safari demo here. One note is uh, Firefox accounts system is all open source, so, and all the tests are also publicly available. So you can, uh, you can watch any of these videos if, you, if you'd like. So in this case, I chose the Safari one. And you can see, so intern initializes, and it runs our uh, unit test. If something goes wrong and we, we can't see any errors, uh, we can you know, go to the browser and uh, poke around there and see on what, what's wrong on Sauce Labs. And you see it, so it's done, and uh, the demo ends there. It successfully te tells you 57 tests passed and, and uh, you're good to go. So that was, you just saw the, um, one of the old HTML reporters and intern, and today I'm excited to announce this is the new HTML reporter uh, new in Intern 2.1, which should be released any second now, today. Uh, so check it out on GitHub. And this, I, re I really like this one. It has these like, nice, clean interface, uh, pretty cool icons, and you know, really, really nice. So that was unit testing. Now, my second favorite part, functional testing. I love functional testing because it allows me to uh, test uh, web app UI uh, poke, poke on buttons, you know, fill out inputs and tell the browser what to do uh, and test that way. So that's what, uh, th this functional testing is powered by Selenium. And for those who don't know, Selenium is a, is a way to send commands that would control the browser, control Firefox and tell it, okay, go click on this button, uh, in, type in some text in an input and continue on and test my user interface. So intern two comes with this cool library, Leadfoot, which uh, it's sort of like jQuery. <laughs> it provides this cross-platform consistency for the Selenium WebDriver API, uh, and sort of eliminates all these bugs that you could have with Selenium, and gives you this clean documentation. That tells you, okay, um, you you can like click on things, you can dismiss alerts, you can close browser windows, and stuff like that. And it works with these uh, browser drivers: Firefox driver, Chrome driver, IE driver, and so on. Uh, yeah, if you, so these are just like a small number of the commands you can uh, use. Uh, these are all promise-based, and uh, 
there's a documentation link there. You can see, uh, if you visit that page, you'll see what's possible to, to do with the browser. Uh, even, even if these commands are like, not enough for you, you can actually use the .execute command, which will, uh, you, where you can execute JavaScript code on the page async and, uh, uh, and sync, asynchronously and asynchronously uh, on that page. So I wanted to show an example of how we can write a functional test with intern and sort of show you how, how easy it is. So imagine the scenario we want to test we have this Firefox account sign-in form, and the user would fill out their email, they would fill out their password, and they would click sign in. So we're, here we're testing is if the account does not exist, then the user should get this unknown account error and have a link for the sign up, uh, have, have an anchor there for the sign up uh, view. When they would click on sign up, it would switch the application view and give them a sign up form. It will also take the email that they put in in a sign in form and put it in the sign up form so they don't have to type it, type it in again. So how can we automate this? So here's a test. Uh, this is sort of the, the body of the test and the, the, uh, the top of the test like that I showed you with the unit test, it would be the same. You would include your assertion library, you would, you would include the, uh, the intern module. So writing functional tests is pretty easy. Let's see, so we got a bit cut off there on top, but what you do is you basically get the remote browser and you call self.getRemote, and then you tell it to go to some URL. So in this case, page URL there, page underscore URL would be our sign-in view. Now we start looking for things on the page, and we can say, okay, find by CSS selector uh, my, uh, an input with type email. If, it can, if you can find it, click on it, clear any previous value that you have there, and uh, type in the email value. And then we call end, which lets us sort of end uh, working with this particular element, and we can continue writing, um, writing our test. So we fill out the email. Now we can proceed to type in the password, and just the same way we can say find by CSS selector, input type password, click on the, <laughs> click on the input, type in the password, and we call end. We, then we can find the submit button, click on it, and that will submit our form. Now you'll notice here I'm using uh, find by CSS selector. I prefer that one because you know, I love CSS selectors, but if you, you can also use uh, find by XPath, uh, find by ID, and there are several other ways you can look for things on the page. So we submit a form, and then we expect to get an error, a div uh, with the class error, that will have an anchor there with a, uh, with a sign up link. We can click on that, and then we expect our view to change from a sign in view to a sign up view and then we validate that the input type email, we can get its attribute, the value attribute, and say, can you validate that the result email in that text box is the same one that the user entered? We can actually improve this test in several ways. Uh, for instance, uh, we can improve our CSS selector and say, uh, can you make sure that this input type email in the end of the test there, uh, make sure that that is part of the sign up view? This way, we'll avoid any of the regressions that, uh, that, for instance, Selenium would think that this input type email is the original sign-in view. So in some cases, you have to do that to make sure you know, there are no regressions. And um, because Selenium tests run really quickly, so if you are, your view doesn't switch quick enough, it might still use the old uh, input. All right, so now I want to show you a demo how like a 10% of our functional tests that we have for uh, Firefox accounts and this will be running on locally on the dev machine. And it flies by fairly quickly. Uh, it, so it does sign in, sign up, uh, password reset, uh, email verification. Uh, there's some terms and conditions pages that also test, make sure the body text is there. So they work with drop downs, inputs, buttons here, and uh, with error fields. And this sort of ends the demo on that change password test, functional test password change test. Now, I also want to talk about how you can uh, actually debug these tests uh, because those can be a bit tricky. And uh, 
this will apply not only to writing functional tests with intern, but also if you ever have to write functional tests with Selenium, uh, you can expect uh, this sort of behavior here, and I'll show you what, what can happen. So we have this basic test, just what, seven lines or something. We have, um, we're looking, again, we're looking at something by CSS selector, and we're saying, can you find me this form with input.login? We want to click on it, type in the email, and continue on. Cool, you write this test, or you write like 10 functional tests, and then you run your tests, and you get this huge error, whoa, something just exploded in, in the web driver. And at first, when I first started writing functional tests, it was sort of, it was a bit crazy. I'm like, what, what, is this, what does that mean? <laughs> Especially, like, it tells you no such element, and you go to the docs, and what does this mean, no such element? It says, uh, no such element means there's no such element. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, but actually, so now it looks totally normal to me. <laughs> you, you, so you see it's like, no such element, all right. Uh, it was it's telling me, I, I was unable to locate an element by the, the CSS selector you told me to, and there's a command duration that says, tw I took 28 seconds looking for it, and I couldn't find it. Uh, so I'm like, okay, let's, let's find where it happened. If, and if we follow the error uh, trace, we can arrive to, uh, to the point where there was a find command called find by CSS selector, and we were, it initialized in tests functional avatar JS on line 49. Okay, let's jump to line 49, and there it is. That's, that's our command. And, you know, we can say, okay, I don't see anything crazy here. So you open up the, your app on normal browser, and you, you know, try to look for the selector form input.login, and you realize it's not there. Okay, you made a typo, and, you know, you can fix it, and the, the, the correct input would be email. You fix that up, run the test, and they're all good. So we fix that, no such element error. Now, because we're testing, um, in my particular case, and most of you, we're not just testing static sites. We would see this no such element error a lot because we have these JavaScript views that load templates. Maybe that's a model window. Uh, it loads up, uh, call, has an XHR call before the model window shows up. We have to give the app time to load those things up. With Selenium, uh, by, the, by default, it will just, uh, you say, can you find the model window? And it will take eight milliseconds looking for it, and it's not gonna wait for your cool animations or, you know, uh, XHR, it will, it will just say, it's not there, error test fail. So wait, what we do is we set this, set find timeout to tell it, okay, here's, here's a page load timeout, you know, take your time, it's 28 seconds, load it up. Uh, we really, we set this large timeout because sometimes we test, uh, te run the functional test against the remote environment, so we have like a nightly staging stable environments. Uh, we have also latest that uh, gets updated on every commit. And we want to run the functional test. And those can be slow sometimes if there's a, um, if, it, if the site is slow to load. Uh, we want to give it time to load everything up. One other solution besides using send find timeout uh, is you can somehow signal back to the test runner and tell it um, like the view has rendered or the model has, uh, the model is there, continue on. Uh, those can be a bit tricky. We're not there yet, so we're just using send find timeout to say, okay, here, take your time, form will show up probably probably fairly quickly, but it might be slow, uh, take some time. Yeah, so <laughs> when, if you start writing functional tests, this is probably the first area you'll see, no such element, so don't freak out. <laughs> it's a fairly common thing. Now, so we, I showed you a demo of running the functional test locally on, on a dev machine that was flying by quickly. Now we wanna test, uh, this content server application on, uh, on different, different browsers and um, different environments. So to do that, internships with DigDog, which is a built-in library, it's an abstraction library for uh, web driver service tunnels. So it lets you easily talk to Sauce Labs, Testing Bot, Browser Stack, and your own Selenium grid if you put time into uh, uh, setting that up. <laughs> and you don't even have to read the documentation for DigDog, you can just, all you have to know is like, here, I, the tunnel I wanna use is the Soslabs tunnel. And you just update your intern configuration and it will do the rest. Uh, one minor thing you might have to do is to uh, set up the Soslabs API keys or browser stack API keys in your environment to make sure the, the tunnel is authenticated. So here's a quick demo of testing the content server remotely on Soslabs uh, with intern. And off it goes. So uh, we're using the intern runner here, and we specify the configuration. We have a special special intern configuration for the Soslabs tunnel. 
And then we can use the custom arguments uh, that's like a feature of intern where you can just access the custom arguments to the executable and we specify the servers we want to run this. Uh, so we run this against the latest stack and we can choose whichever one we want. And of course you can build uh, shortcuts for this. Uh, you know, you can do like NPM test, uh, run test latest, run test nightly, any, any, anything you want. Uh, but uh, in this case, it's sort of keeping it flexible. I can change the, uh, the servers that I'm using uh, pretty easily. And th so it runs the, sa the same functional tests here from the terminal, uh, uh, the same ones that I showed you earlier there where it was uh, clicking on buttons and typing into inputs. Uh, this one's a bit slower because it has to open a remote tunnel and send remote commands. And let's see, so it goes to through sign up and then sign in flows. And while this is going, we can actually jump to Sauce Labs again to check on our progress here. So we have an intern sauce in progress, cool. And all sorts of information. And again, these are publicly available, so you can uh, uh, check it out. So what we can see, we can actually see these tests running here. Uh, in this case, this is Firefox on Windows 7. Uh, and it's, it's testing the reset password flow. And if view viewing the tests is, sort of is not enough for you, you can actually take control of this browser here. And uh, if something gets stuck in your test runner or your app you know, something, there's an error, you can double click uh, on this, on this uh, video feed and you, you'll, get, you'll be able to control, control the browser. And if it's stuck, you can open the browser console, debug things, you know, do whatever. In this particular demo, I'm going to actually close the browser because it's a malicious demo. <laughs> so if somebody's running the test, I have the same control of the account, I'm just gonna close the, close the browser. Um, that, will that will make the, the test runner freak out and be like, the browser just closed your app just cro crashed, crashed it. And then hopefully that never happens for real because that's scary. Um, so that's, the, that's running the tests, functional tests on Sauce Labs. So with uh, one of the first demos I showed you, the JS client, uh, we, te we quickly tested it, uh, the JavaScript uh, library on Sauce Labs in several environments. So we do, that, we do the same thing, uh, run the same script on Travis CI on every pull request or commit to, to make sure you know, there are no bugs in, in cross-platform cross cross -platform bugs with the library. And you know, uh, it must, uh, before any feature or bug fixes get merged, it, the, the tests the, have to pass. For the large applications such as the content server, we have to be more intelligent there. We have a, a growing number of full functional, uh, functional tests and uh, those take a while to run, especially if you open up external tunnels and you do all this, all this stuff. So what we do, um, we have two, two uh, CI environments. For uh, we have Travis, Travis that runs again for pull requests and commits, uh, that installs our project, runs JS hint, uh, runs uh, JS CS for style checking, uh, runs the unit tests, and then runs a limited set of functional tests uh, in a real browser in Firefox in this uh, environment called XVFB, which is like a virtual video driver on Travis. That lets us keep our pull requests and uh, which get, have new features, bug fixes and so on. Uh, that, that keeps the, the build time uh, under uh, around 10 minutes. So in like seven, 10 minutes, it will, it will run these tests and we merge a new feature or a bug fix. Now, then there's a separate system uh, that deploys that latest commit, deploys the whole Firefox account system, and Jenkins picks up on that and detects a new hash that you know, the app updated, and it installs uh, some project files, and installs intern, uh, not the whole thing, we just need the intern runner and uh, a few other things, and it runs this whole f uh, full functional test suite, which, which, takes around, which can take around 15 to 20 minutes or longer, and the more tests we add, uh, you know, that number is growing there. But here we can, you know, let it do its thing. We can set as many browsers as we want. We can, we have the sauce of integration there and, and so on. So it can take, it can take its time and, and uh, you know, we can keep an eye on that. But our, the, the most important part here is the sort of this development cycle is not, is not handled by, if, if these tests ran for like 20 minutes and then somebody made a tiny JSON mistake, then they have to like wait 40 minutes to, uh, for their feature or like a tiny bug fix to get merged. All right, so I also want to talk about 
more than that just tests, not more than just like unit tests and functional tests in intern. One thing, uh, code coverage. If you're, not using, if you're not using code coverage, check it out. Uh, internships with a code coverage reporter. So all you have to do is you have to specify uh, reporters. So you can say, we have, I have a console reporter and a, um, this LCOV, LCOV HTML reporter, which will generate code coverage reports. Uh, besides that, also, if you, um, it will also give you code coverage when, uh, when your tests run. But I like the HTML reporter because it gives you this nice HTML report. And it tells you, okay, so in your, somewhere in your code, when you, after your unit test ran, uh, this, in the switch statement, case both was never called, and it highlights it all in red and say, it says, this code is not tested in your unit test. And usually it will give you a percentage saying, like, 80, only 70% of your uh, test is covered. And there's like a few other examples there. Yeah, so check out code coverage. Uh, it's really useful. And so it's, it's a bit of a motivation to, to write tests. Really, <laughs> when you see this report and half of the file is red, you're like, oh man, I failed at testing, so <laughs> I better write more tests. Uh, now, another thing that I really like is with uh, WebDriver, there's, a, there's this neat command called take screenshot, and it has these endless possibilities what you can do with it. One basic one uh, is, for instance, on Travis tests where we don't have, we're not able to see the, f the functional tests run um, you know, in a real browser, it's sort of running in the background this virtual environment. We, we can take a screenshot if something goes wrong. Or you know, if, if something hangs and like your promise rejects, you can say take screenshot of the current view, and you can sort of debug that way. Um, you can also you know send a screenshot. It just when you call take screenshot, it resolves the, the promise into the buffer, which is just an image buffer, and you can send it send that image to some external endpoint and uh, use that. Uh, what I'm actually working on this project, and <laughs> I put it here just sort of inspire you of what, what's possible. Uh, so this, this tool is gonna do uh, visual differences in, in tests. So every new commit, so I have two commits here, one on the left and one all the way to the right there. And what it does, it takes those two and it takes the difference uh, and it says, okay, here's, here's what happened, here's the difference, and there's 10% change in this, in this view. So uh, what I'm going for here is I, I wanna write the functional tests as I want to. Uh, like I can write uh, Selenium commands with left foot to tell this form to sign in and then take some screenshots in the signed in view. Uh, so I'm not using any external tools, I'm still using intern, it's just a base, uh, it's a special um, screenshot test that would go through all the pages on, uh, in, the, in the application and take screenshots of them. So this is not done yet because it's a bit tricky here. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna be able to test different, uh, in terms of responsive design, I can tell uh, Selenium to resize the browser so I can, uh, run the same test three times with different uh, uh, resolution and all, send, send all, the, all the screenshots to this external endpoint and then, then I can select and see um, you know, what happened. Maybe somebody <laughs> updated CSS and they broke the mobile view. And um, another part here is like, maybe it was intentional, maybe they fixed something, they now the mobile view actually, you know, it, it, the difference in, uh, in the CSS ended up being I don't know, like 30% and that was intentional. So, that's why it's, it's taking a bit to write this tool because it can't just sort of automatically tell you uh, if, <laughs> if the visual diff test failed or passed. But that's something that's coming soon, hopefully. Uh, and yeah, and take screenshot is your friend and uh, it's great. <clears throat> Next up, another cool thing, another cool trick. With WebDriver has capabilities, uh, which lets you, uh, when you run in the configuration, same, this is an intern configuration, and you can say capabilities. Uh, with Firefox, you can de uh, define a Firefox underscore profile. And there's a node module that will generate Firefox profiles for you. <laughs> that way you can just set these preferences the way you want. Um, you can say media navigator permission disabled true. And you know, at first it sounds a bit too much, but when, if your app is really, if your app relies on like geolocation or get user media, and some of these HTML, HTML5 APIs that ask for user permission to like for the camera, geolocation, and so on. You can actually disable all those with this custom profile. Now, when you would run these tests on Sauce Labs, uh, Sauce Labs probably doesn't have <laughs> any cameras in their VMs, but this will still save you a lot of time in terms of, you know, you have this functional testing suite which like most of your app does get user media. To save you time, you don't have to accept the permission uh, all the time you can just uh, say, okay, don't ask me for this permission. 
Uh, and this is just <laughs> the most basic example. One other thing that we use, we change some accessibility options and I don't know, about config and Firefox has like over I think probably 200 or more different configurations that you can play around with and specify exactly what you want. Chrome driver also has, uh, it, it, you cannot do like custom profiles or anything, but uh, there's this page I wanted to make sure I want to have a link in the slides to it. I can never find it for some reason on Google. <laughs> uh, this is a Chrome driver capabilities page that also lets you tweak some options and play around with that. And basically in the configuration file you just say config capabilities uh, dot, uh, like an array for some Chrome, Chrome driver settings and so on. And yeah, so the couple of links for you, there's the main intern wiki on GitHub and the whole project is open source. You can hack on it, fork it and uh, play around with it. There's a link to an intern examples Git repo that I maintain that uh, tries to sort of show inter integration for like with jQuery, Angular, and so on. There's also some tutorial. Uh, there's a there's a demo how to use it with Sauce Labs, Travis CI, and stuff like that. There's a step-by-step -step tutorial that if you want to follow along, um, it gives you. Um, it has like a it's a Git repo, so you can like jump to solutions if you want if you want to just try to the solution, or you can just do a step-by-step -step thing there. And finally, in terms of support. Uh, you know, it's an open source project. Uh, the, there's an official Stack Overflow tag, the intern, or just intern on Stack Overflow if you, want, if you have questions. And also, as I mentioned, SitePen, who are the core maintainers and developers of the project, they are also offer commercial support. Uh, one other thing I noticed in the keynote today, uh, a lot of you test in uh, IE's, old IE, six, seven, and eight. So intern has this, um, an officially maintained sort of fork that gets updated every release. And so for old IE, it's called Intern Geezer. It's, uh, you can install from NPM. And the goal there is uh, to provide support for old IE. But when you, uh, so if, if your library, you know, or, or a project requires old IE support, you would, you would have to use that. In the instance of the FXAJS client, we needed IE8 support, so we went with Intern Geezer. Uh, and, uh, you know, we use that, but there's there's just a few minor differences. Some things that old IE cannot support with the modern environments, but it's it's really easy. Uh, one project I worked on, it was really easy to switch. And like we dropped IE support, so I could just uh, change my npm uh, package JSON, update to the latest version, and so on. Right, and yes, thank you for attending this talk. If you have any questions, tweet at me, and I believe we have five minutes or more for questions, if anybody has any web driver questions or, or unit test type questions. Let's give it up for Vlad. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> now give up questions for Vlad. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, you can find me at the conference, no questions here, but I have some stickers, if anybody wants uh, some intern stickers. Uh, you know, the project is really official, it has stickers, right? So, <laughs> cool, thank you again. <laughs>